All hail Hypnotoad. He is almighty and ever knowing. He even knows what M19 commander you're building. He wants in on it. But get Rog, you say. I'm building Lena. It's mono white. I can't put you in there. Shh. Nobody will have to know. It'll be our little secret. Now, as far as opening hand goes, yeah, let's go on Mulligan. If we had two on colored lanes, I'd definitely keep on this one. But uh, yeah, let's go on Mulligan. Let's see, we draw into. Yes, I'll take that. We have Kodama's Reach, Woodland Cemetery, Lano, Warway, Sylvan Scrying. Yes, I love this hand. We're going to keep on this one in a heartbeat, and we will definitely put Misty on top. But yes, pick Girog and whatever sort of M19. Oh, hey, awesome. Okay, there we go. So we've got our opponents actually playing the, well, I don't know if it's the actual Church of Athreos. Whenever I see Athreos, I just always assume that uh, it's some variation of Athreos. It's the church, because if you're building Athreos deck, that's what it is. Uh, let's go ahead and get down Misty Rainforest, and then anything else, we're going to go past turn our opponent. But yes, what I was saying is definitely put Get Rock in whatever M19 commander deck you're building. Um, it'll be our little secret. Nobody will have to know. And if anybody ever questions you, just tell them, man, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Every every single card in this deck is on color. Now, we are playing the Get Rock Monster Death Touch. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice the Get Rock Monster unless you sacrifice a land. And actually, let's go and crack Misty so I do not forget about this one. Let's go and grab, um, let's grab a dual source. Let's go and grab uh, Overgrown Tomb. Have that come into play tap. Not going to pay too live, and we'll let our opponent search that up. Uh, but yes, yeah, sacrifice a the land, then you may play an additional land on each of your turns. Then whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, draw a card, and I'll cover Athreos in a second. Let's go and go for Sylvan Scrying. I like that. We're just hitting these land drops. It feels really good. Let's go for Sylvan Scrying. And unfortunately, with Ancient Tomb being gone out of one versus one commander, that's typically what we would always take off this one. So at this point right now, um, we are looking at one, two, three, four. If we do end up getting lucky with a fifth land drop, I'm just going to go and grab a fetch land. That way we can at least have something to get down with Gitrog. Yeah, I think I like this. Let's go and grab Windswept Teeth. And then um, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. Plank gets Athreos, God of Passage, Indestructible, Devotion 7 turns into a creature. Then whenever one or more creatures, um, excuse me, whenever another creature you own dies, uh, return it to your hand unless target opponent pays three life. And we'll see what sort of flavor Athreos stack our opponent's rolling out there. It also reminds me of uh, the Church of Athreos. If you've been a fan of the channel or a uh, watcher of the channel for a long time, you may have noticed I haven't put out Athreos in a long time. I'm kind of working on something... And it'll make a little bit more sense when we kind of get there. But uh, I'll kind of explain that. Let's go ahead and get down Lana Warway. So let's go and go for Kodama's Reach. It's going to be do do do. And let's go and grab, um, at this point, we'll probably grab two swamps off this. Because we got three green sources across that. No, actually, we'll go grab another green. We do two have two double green in the hand. Let's go and put the four sun of the battlefield, swamp into our hand, and then anything else. We're going to go and pass the turn. Yes, so with Athreos, I I'm kind of in the middle of not necessarily rebooting the Church of Athreos, but kind of incorporating more more stuff within the church you know maybe maybe just maybe we've seen Razaketh in the past maybe Razaketh gets elected as the head Sunday school teacher and he might have his own Sunday school teacher deck I don't know that might be somewhere along the future just keep that in mind uh, let's go and get the swamp down but it's kind of something along those lines so uh, let's go and tap out for Gitrog I don't want to don't want to tell everything about it, but I'm really excited about that. So let's go and get out get Dark Monster. And in fact, I'll probably be having a uh, Church of Athreos week sometime soon, which um, definitely can't wait to go for that. Uh, let's go and crack Windswept Teeth. That way we can get a card draw. And I just oh love playing Get Rog. Feels so good. See if our opponent might have some sort of spot rule. Okay, go for the throat. That's fine. At least we got to make an additional land drop. Let's get Get Rog pop back up. Drawn to Mary's Guile. And let's go and grab a green source. Let's go and grab, um, yeah, we'll go and grab Bayou. I like that. We get down Mary's Guy, and that allows us to kind of start filtering through the top part of our library. Our opponent is sitting at three cards in the hand at this point right now. So uh, hopefully, maybe they're not drawing in any sort of gas or go for the throat. Might have been one of the last things on there. But yeah, planning on having like, you know, Discovery Channel has Shark Week. I'm planning on doing a Church of Athreos week sometime soon. I just need to, uh, it's something that I, I want to get ahead of as far as recording goes. So I'm kind of going to do it piece by piece. And uh, then you'll definitely know when it happens because. Hey, I love the Church of Athreos just as much as everybody else does. So yeah, I'm definitely a happier person whenever I get the Church of Athreos going uh, on the channel. Now, we will be able to make an additional land drop with Gitrog. We're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and also with Evolving Wilds, it's going to allow us to kind of shuffle up the top part of our library if we don't like what's on top with Miri's Guile. So uh, let's see what's on top. We have Vampiric Link, Green Sun Zenith, and Druid's Call. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and go for Man, I love Druid's Call. <laughs> You gotta live the dream with that one. So let's go put Vampiric Link on top. Let's go Green Sun Zenith. We could cash that in for a uh, a card draw. And actually, in fact, we will go and get that one up. Green. Let's do this. So we'll go Green Sun Zenith. And we'll go for Druid's Call. Let's go and get down Mana Confluence. Let's go and tap out for Gitrog. It's gonna be green, black, and then whatever color we really feel necessary. 
that's going to get down Evolving Wilds. We should be able to draw, draw into that Green Sun Zenith in response to that crack, and then we'll shuffle away that other card. All right, draw into Green Sun Zenith, and then what we can do with Green Sun Zenith is grab one of our Enchanter's pieces. Let's go and grab another Forest, put that on the battlefield. Comes into play tapped, and then anything else, we're going to go and pass turn to our opponent. Keep our fingers crossed that uh, Gitrog will stick around this time. Now, if you have not seen Gitrog before on the channel, what are we doing with this deck? This is Gitrog. Basically, you can see we're already getting some good card draw off of the lands that we're getting. Um, it's Gitrog Enchanters, Voltron. We're trying to stick as many enchantments onto Gitrog as possible, make them as big as possible, and then swing across for a really big chunk of damage. And so, really, when you combine the Gitrog card draw engine with your lands hitting the graveyard, and when you add a, you know add in some Enchanters pieces to get some extra card draw off of casting stuff like Fallen Ideal and Druid's Calm, it really helps you kind of push a really fun game plan. Um, as far as next turn goes, we can Green Sun Zenith for one of our um, Enchantress pieces. We also do have Corsa of Crufix if we want to try and start making some of the land drops off the top part of our library. And once again with Mirror's Guile, if we don't like what's going on top, uh, we can also go for Green Sun Zenith to kind of shuffle that up. Okay, our opponent's going to go ahead and pass the turn, um, sacrifice and land. Let's do it like this. Let's go ahead and get, get Rock's Trigger on the stack first. Let's go ahead and go for Miri's Guile. That we can draw into whatever lane we want. Yes, we're going to use that ability. It's going to be Dark Depths, Burgeoning, and Fortitude. Okay. We're pretty much okay with our land drops. We are not don't really need Burgeoning. Let's go ahead and put Dark Depths on top of our library. Uh, let's grab Fortitude. And then we'll have to sacrifice a land. At this point right now, we'll just go and sacrifice a force. We do need to find uh, Life from the Loam. That would be really good for us to get that going. Because that's going to allow us to basically kind of negate this get rid of a land off of Get Rog's ability. All right. Drawn to Fortitude, and we do draw into Dark Depths. Let's go and get down a Corsair of Crufix. And actually, if we were going to go for Crufix, we could have single that one just a little bit better. But we'll see what's on top of our library. Okay, so we do have Burgeoning on top. Let's go and go for Green Sun Zenith for two. It's going to be one, two. And we'll still go and leave up uh, Mana Confluence. So yeah, we're going to click OK on that one. Uh, let's go and grab a Growthian Enchantress. Have that enter the battlefield. That does leave Bear Umbra on top of our library. Let's go ahead and go for Dark Depths. Can enter the battlefield tapped. Uh, we're going to gain a life off that one. Put us up to 24. And we're just looking at Gray Merchant. Yeah, let's go and swing it with Gitraga. I like going in on this one. With Bear Umbra on top, that's going to allow us to untap all of our lands and end up with a pretty good chunk of mana. So let's go and swing across for 6-6. Six, six. That will have Death Touch. And if they do end up blocking with Gray Merchant, uh, we'll still go and pay that 3 life to make sure that it stays in the graveyard because uh, definitely don't want to allow them to kind of recast it or maybe to get some really good devotion going. And make sure that um, we do that correct. Yeah, we're going to pay three life. Yes, pay three life to prevent that. And then Dark Depths enters the battlefield. Anything else I'm going to do for one? No, we're going to go and pass turn to our opponent. But yeah, so like, like another fun Church of Athreos deck that I really want to build is definitely going to be the new partner commanders, especially when they release on Magic. Ooh, Day of Judgment. Okay. Uh... I think that's going to get it. Destroy all creatures, yeah. Unfortunately, we was hoping to hit another land off that. That way we could have gotten down Fortitude. But yeah, that's going to take care of it. Uh, we are looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we need to get a few more land drops going. Uh, we do have Creeping Renaissance, actually. So we can go for a permanent type to bring all of these lands. Oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Unless you get hit with a Bajuka Bog. Oh, <laughs> that was brutal. I was getting really happy about going for that Creeping Renaissance, but no, we cannot. All right, see, wait, let's look at Mary's guy. I'll look at the top three cards of our library. That was, uh, that was pretty nasty. Yes, we're going to use that ability, definitely. And it's going to be Realms Uncharted, Constant Mist, and Bear Umbra. Um, let's go and put Bear Umbra on top. Let's put Constant Mist on top and definitely want to go for Realms Uncharted. That way we can grab those lands. They're going to go into the graveyard, and we might even be able to bring those back uh, with Creeping Renaissance. Let's go and tap out for Realms Uncharted. It's going to be one, two, three. Okay, let's get this popped out just a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're going to go for Thespian Stage, we're going to go for Drown Yard Temple, uh, we're going to go for Urborg, and let's go ahead and go for Verdant Catacombs. That way, that's going to be a really good spread for us. Uh, click OK on that one. And basically what's going to happen is, you know, if our opponent gives us Thespian Stage, we can make a copy of Dark Depths, giving us a uh, Dark Lage, uh, not Dark Lage, Merit Lage token. Uh, if they do put Drown Yard Temple into the graveyard, we can bring it back for three total mana. And then Urborg's going to allow us to finally turn all these lands into swamps, which mainly going to give us a Swamp of Dark Depths, and then Catacombs will give us an option to kind of sacrifice a get rock. So let's see what uh, let's see what lane cards your opponent wants to put in the graveyard. All right, so we're gonna do a drown yard temple and catacombs. Um, let's do this. Let's go and go for drown yard temple, and then let's go ahead and go for yeah. I think I like going for a creeping renaissance on this one. It's gonna be one two. 
And we're going to choose a lane on this. We're going to get both of those lanes back to the hand, and then anything else, we're going to go and pass turn to our opponent. So next turn, we get down Urborg. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Actually, we'll get a better mana count. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, that should be, I think we're looking at nine total mana to get down Gitrog. And that would also allow us to get down Thespian Stage to go ahead and threaten the Dark Depths combo. And like I did mention, this is an Enchantress build, but it also doesn't hurt to kind of run some sort of extra value land stuff in here. We're not running anything super oppressive, um, like a... Um like a wasteland lock or something like that, but definitely, you know, you are playing a deck that cares about lands. So running something like Thespian Sage and Dark Depths, it always kind of gives you just that backup plan uh, to kind of get down a Merit Lage token and start to swing in. Which reminds me, I do have Merit Lage token. Uh, I do have Merit Lage in the Church of Athros, which is always really fun to get that going. Just adds some special, uh, adds a special vibe to the church. I always like it. All right, let's go and get Mary's Guile going. Uh, look at the top three cards of our library. Yes, we're gonna use that ability. That's gonna be Worn Power Stone, Sylvan Safekeeper, and then let's go and put the Worn Power Stone on top. Let's go. Let's do it like this. Let's go ahead and go for Marsh Flats, and we'll go for Sylvan Savekeeper. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So we'll draw into Sylvan Savekeeper. Let's go ahead and get down Urborg. Um, that's going to be double check Get Rog. That will be, yeah, nine total mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, let's go ahead and get down Sylvan Savekeeper. Uh, that way we do have some sort of protection against that one card in our opponent's hand. And then let's go ahead and tap out for Get Rog. Okay, Get Rock hits the battlefield. Let's go ahead and get down Catacombs. Um, let's go ahead and sacrifice Catacombs. That way we can get an additional card draw for that. We'll be able to draw into additional uh, card on top. Draw into that Marsh Flats. And let's go ahead and grab a Swamp or a Forest. And then we are looking at, uh, let's go ahead and grab a Swamp off. Actually, we'll grab a Forest because we can grab a Swamp off Marsh Flats. And then anything else, no. We're going to go ahead and pass the turn to our opponent. So. And next turn, we are looking at threatening a Merit Lage token with Thespian Stage. Uh, we do have some protection from Gitrog from our opponent, and uh, with Sylvan Safekeeper. And the fun thing with Sylvan Safekeeper is that we can add a lot of mana to our mana pool, uh, sacrifice all these lands, and then bring them back with a Creeping Renaissance if we need to kind of dig a little bit deeper. Now, as far as the enchantments in our hand, we have Fallen Ideal. Uh, that's going to give a Gitrog Flying. It's going to get plus two, plus one until end of turn. It's going to allow us to kind of start pushing past our opponent. And then Druid's Call, like I said, if we draw into Predatory Urge, that's going to allow us to get some really good... Uh, Get some really good squirrel tokens going. And then also just a little bit of a safety net. We can get four to two down and start sacrificing some of those. <laughs> oh no, our opponent's drawing five lands in a hand. Hopefully they get a little bit better off. That's always a bummer uh, whenever you draw into a bunch of lands like that. It's never fun. All right, opponent's going to kick it back over. Uh, let's get the Gitrog trigger. Let's go for Miri's Guile. Looking, yes, we're going to use that ability. Look at the top three cards. That's going to be Oblivion Crown. Ooh, Demonic Vigor. And then Azusa Lost. Let's go and put Azusa on top. Let's go Oblivion Crown. And let's go for Demonic Vigor. And we'll go and sacrifice a land. At this point right now, we're just going to get rid of a Swamp since we do have Urborg on the battlefield. All right, I'm going to draw into a card. Draw into Demonic Vigor. And then let's go ahead and get down, get down Oblivion Crown. Let's go and go for Marsh Flats. Let's go and crack Marsh Flats. Let's go and grab Swamp. And let's go and start dumping our hand. Let's go for Fallen Ideal. That's going to be one, two, three. Uh, we're going to lose two life off this one, and they're going to gain two life off that. But at least it's going to allow us to start pushing in with Gitrog at that 6-6. Six, six. Let's go and get down Thespian Stage, and then let's go ahead and go for Oblivion Crown on Gitrog. Oblivion Crown actually works out really good in this deck, in that it allows us to... Um, let's go and go Drown Yard Temple for Black, and then one Colorless off Gitrog. I mean, off the uh, Force over here. All right, we're going to lose two more life off that one. They're going to gain two. And then let's go and go for Demonic Vigor. That way, if we want to, we can actually go and sacrifice a creature to go and push past on this one. Uh, let's go and tap out for one more black. Put that on to get Rog. All right, there we go. Let's go and push in for seven. That's going to put our opponent down to 37. It also kind of puts us in a spot where we will have a, uh, at least a three-turn clock uh, with combat damage or commander damage in the air. All right, so we got a flying get rog swinging across with an activated ability of sacrificing a creature. That's going to knock them down to 30. And then we're also going to leave up the Thespian Stage mana uh, to make a copy of uh, Dark Depths. All right, anything else, we're going to go and pass turn to our opponent. But yeah, so basically, if you don't know how the Dark Depths combo works, you get Thespian Stage, you use that two-mana activation, and it becomes a copy of Dark Depths. Since it's already on the battlefield, it's not going to enter the battlefield with those tokens on there and that allows you to go ahead and push past on that one all right we got cabal swinging on this we're going to take it that will put us down to looking at one two three four five six seven eight nine ten two puts us down to that let's go and make a merit lage token just in case just in case we're looking at something like sanguinate or something i'm not sure uh, we're going to make a copy of dark depths uh, it's going to pay off dark depths and we're going to tap out for one more off lano war waste we're going to choose to keep the copy of Thespian Stage since it does no counters on it. All right, we're going to get that Merit Lage token. 
And one of the fun things about this is that um, you still get a card draw whenever it goes to the graveyard, which feels really good. Getting a card draw and getting a 2020 Merit Lage token on the battlefield. All right. Get two card draw, Alpha Authority, and Canopy Cover. Let's go and send Merit Lage token blocking on Cabal. And actually, yeah, we'll go ahead and let Cabal go back to the... Yeah, no, we're, we're okay on that one. Just in case our opponent's running a Sanguinate or something like that, I would hate to just lose out with us at 13, because they are sitting at about 10 mana. So that does kind of get us in a spot where it gets our life total down just a little bit too low. And if they simply just want to go for Cabal, they can definitely go for that. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so our opponent has Death to the Deathless. Okay, I was worried about an X spell. Each opponent loses two times X life, so we're going to lose 16. Oh, no. Is there anything that we can do? <laughs> I think that's going to get it. Oh, no. Yeah, that puts us down to negative three. Good game to our opponent. They get us with Debt to the Debtless. I was really worried about Exsanguinate, but um, didn't even think about Debt to the Debtless. And unfortunately, to our opponent, I can't pull the chat up. So just, if you see this video, I want to say a good game. That played out really well. That's what makes Commander fun, is we've got to get Rog the 7-7 seven, seven and flying. We have a Merit Lage token on the battlefield. But Debt to the Debtless, Debt to the Church. Uh, you know, if you know if you owe a tithe to the Church, they're definitely going to collect it on this one. And uh, the Church of Athreos did collect their tithe against Get Rog. So, so we got some good stuff going. It got Merit Lage token, but unfortunately that's going to take care of it. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.